children okay so children in the previous video you have already seen the first part of the this lesson measurement and motion so this is just a last topic that was remaining previously in the first part uh, that is measuring the length of a curved line we have already studied using the divider this is the using of this is through using of thread suppose we want to measure the length of given curvix line ab you have to tie a knot at the at one end of the thread and uh, place the knot not at the point a take the thread along the small part of a curved line now children keeping that part pressed with your finger carefully straighten the line along the thread along the small part of the line so what will happen if you have to keep moving along the line till you reach the point b you have to make a marking and on the on the thread where it coincides with point b using the ruler measure the length of the thread from the initial knot to the knot to the final marking this gives us the length of curved line ab and thus we have measured the length of that curved line so this was the two methods by using a divider and this was using thread so we so children we now move on to the second part this video the second part of the lesson that is motion about motion what is motion an object is said to be in motion if it changes its position with respect to its surroundings in a given time motion can be seen everywhere in our surroundings motion of an object is always considered with respect to or in relation to another object example a bird flying in the sky a car on the road the child riding a swing etc so children motion is defined as some kind of a change in the position of an object with the time so we have types of motion and they are translatory motion rotational motion oscillatory periodic and non periodic motion random motion and also we have multiple motions too so let us study them one by one what the first one is translatory motion the motion in which all the parts of an object are moving in through the same direction same distance in same time it is called as translate so the example you have to consider a train moving on straight track if we travel in a train every passenger that is we if we travel in a train we also move in that same direction right so we are said to be in translatory motion so it is also of two types first one is rectilinear and the another one is curvy linear motion so the rectilinear motion as the name itself suggest is a motion in a straight line is rectilinear and uh, vice versa in the same way similarly the curvy linear will be in a curved line so some examples of rectilinear motion are car on a straight road water flow falling from a height or march past of a soldiers in a parade like this so the next type of motion we move on further to the next motion that is rotational motion the motion in which the object moves about a fixed axis without any change in its radius is called rotational motion so it like a center it has a fixed point and it goes on rotating rotating in this type of motion different parts of an object move through different distance in the same duration of time so the examples are a spinning top of a potter's wheel planet earth moving around the sun on its axis a moving fan or a windmill a merry go round etc so these were the rotational motion now we have oscillatory motion so when an object moves to and fro or back and front about a fixed point it is said to be in a oscillatory motion motion of a swing or a, a pendulum of a clock are the example of oscillatory motion when the string of a guitar is plugged it moves to and fro very rapidly similarly when a drum is struck its membranes move back and front very fast that is they vibrate so very fast back and front these are vibratory motions so oscillatory and vibratory motions this were the next one is periodic and non periodic motion so a motion repeats itself after a regular intervals of time is called a periodic motion that is it after a specific period of time it will repeat so the example is swinging of a pendulum like in this much time it comes to a one position a after that it swings back goes to b like this it repeats motion of a hands of a clock the rotation of the earth that is earth takes one year to complete one revolution around the sun or you can say 24 hours a day to rotate around itself so this was periodic now we have a non periodic motion a motion that do not repeats itself at regular intervals of time are called non periodic motion so the examples are the kite flying in the sky uh, fitting of uh, hitting of a tennis ball by a player this will happen only for once it, it won't repeat uh, uh, the beating of a heart heart beats faster when we exercise or run right so it beats slower or when we sleep so like this it doesn't repeat so it's non periodic 
The next one is random motion. A motion is said to be a random one when the direction and speed of the object keeps changing continuously. For example, a bird is flying in the air. It will fly according to its own will, right? It doesn't fix like today I will travel only in a straight direction from this point to this point. No. So, a honeybee buzzing around in the park. It moves wherever it wishes, right? So, this is a random motion. Flying a feathered alien seed in the air or waving a flag. All these are results of random motion. Now, let us see some other examples of motion which are circular motion. It is similar to a to the rotational motion. In a circular motion, an object moves such that the distance from a fixed point remains the same. That is, it becomes a circle. So, blaze of a fan moving, giant wheel moving, and movement of plants around the sun, or all these are said to be circular motion. We I already saw what is periodic motion. So, let us just see the examples. That is, motion of a pendulum, branch of a tree moving, and moving of a child on the swing. All these are periodic motion. Now the last thing that we need, you all need to know is the multiple motions. Many a times children more than one type of motion can be seen in an object. Such objects show multiple motions. Multiple in the sense they are not really only in a one but at the same time they undergo two three motions. Two or more, one or more. Motion of a, so first example is motion of a bicycle. The wheels of a bicycle shows rotational motion and the bicycle as a whole shows translatory motion, right? Next, we have motion of earth around sun. So, uh, the earth undergoes two motions. That is, first of all, it revolves around the sun and also it rotates around its own axis. So, the earth has got two motions. It shows rotational motion and periodic motion. So, drawing water from a well using a pulley. The pulley rotates while the bucket of water moves straight up. So, it, the pulley is under circular motion or you can say periodic and uh, the bucket is coming up in the straight line so it will be a rectilinear motion so like this these were the examples of multi multiple motions children can an object undergo more than one motion at the same time this was the answer to this question as we have discussed in the previous page so a ball rolling on the ground shows both the rotational and rectilinear motion and also another example is a sieving machine that remains at the same location while its wheel will move in a circular and the needle will have a periodic motion like this various examples are there in a day to day life which shows multiple motions children this was about our chapter measurement and motion so uh, in this chapter you studied the units of measurement what is measurement uh, the si units the standard units and all and uh, in motion the types of motion and the examples of motion so this was our lesson and it is completed thank you thank you